What's happening everyone, Tom Gorin here, welcome to episode number 20 of the F124 Alpine to Glory career mode series. We are here for the fourth race of season two here in the Alpine to Glory. It is, uh, what race is it? The Chinese Grand Prix here in Shanghai. We are coming off a very shocking DNF because of our engine failure in the previous a uh, race, a race that we were pretty much dominating, we had the pace to win, we got pole position and we failed to do that. We get our um, analysis as far as the issue is concerned, I think it was an uh, ERS issue that caused it, and we get 400 resource points for our pretty much our engine blowing up into a million pieces. We begin with a durability upgrade by uh, Pierre Gasly and as you can see we are now trying we are now on the on the heels of the top teams as far as our performance uh, chart is concerned. I think one more major upgrade and we will be up there with uh, Ferrari and also Mercedes. We get that front wing uh, flat profile upgrade and we have now overtaken McLaren as far as being the, is it fifth quickest car? I'm not really sure, I think fifth or fourth quickest car. I know Red Bull still have you know the, the best car, but as you can see uh, with our aero, uh, we still are pretty much there as far as being competitive. There's no other things for the timeline as far as any cutscenes or secret meetings or anything. So, without further ado, let's head for redemption in China. Forget pit stops, forget fuel management. It's pedal to the metal all the way here as we get ready for today's sprint. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting sprint. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Russell, Fernando Alonso, Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Norris, Gasly, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Sonoda, Bottas, Albert, Magnussen, Ocon, Vesti, Joe, Hulkenberg, and Thomas. And with preparations almost complete, let's head trackside for today's sprint. And we welcome you to the commentary box overlooking the circuit. I'm Alex Jakes, and I'm joined by Anthony Davidson. So, a sprint race today, and that means lights to flag, no stops. And how is that going to affect the driver behind the wheel? Absolutely. So for today, there's no pit stop or shouldn't be a pit stop anyway if things go right and you can forget about strategy. You're just driving today as fast as you can. Make those overtakes if you need to. And that's what a sprint weekend's all about. Starting off this video with the sprint race here in China and I didn't uh, do qualifying, I pretty much just skipped qualifying because uh, sprint weekends on F124 take way too long and I think it's more entertaining if I start from the back and show you some of the best moments of a 10 lap uh, sprint race before we head into qualifying. Uh, it pretty much gives us a good chance as far as to see what the car is feeling like, what the track's also feeling like. Of course, as well, we get a good uh, sense as far as how the car is with the fuel. But anyway, here we go, getting ready for 10 laps here in the sprint race in Shanghai. Lights out, and away we go. Hulkenberg gets a tremendous start. He's already in 16th place as we go in towards Turn 1. Want to just take a little bit conservative. However, going around the outside, we've got on the uh, blue tarmac there. As we go around the outside in towards two, four, six cars, and we're already in P15. We're gonna try and go on the inside of a Kevin Magnussen in the Haas, but Magnussen gets better traction. And we've already made around about five positions already in the space of four corners. Magnussen makes a late move there in towards uh, turn number five or turn six. I still don't know the corners of the Shanghai circuit. And now we're gonna try and out traction through Bottas in the Sauber and we are now into P13. I can't lie, uh, Kick Sauber, they've had a very awful season uh, in real life, haven't they? I don't think they've scored a single point and especially with their move to Audi in the real life season, next season, um, it's not looking good for the Sauber based team. Lap two out of 10, we're gonna dive bomb our teammate Pierre Gasly in towards the hairpin. We just about make the corner there and we are now in towards the top 10 here in the sprint. It's only the top eight though. 
that score points. So we try. We must need. We must get um, a top eight finish if we want to close the gap on Max Verstappen, who is currently leading by I'd say two seconds on a Charles Leclerc. Entering the hairpin now, as you can see, yellow flags. A Ferrari has spawned. There's a massive traffic jam. Charles Leclerc has been hit by I think that's George Russell. A red flag here in Shanghai, and I wanted to see a replay. However, I can't see a replay. The, the game didn't give me an option for a replay. However, Charles Leclerc did lose the back end coming out of the corner and we get our first red flag on F124. The first red flag of the Alpine's glory and the first red flag on this game, believe it or not. We've not had a red flag at all, which is insane to believe. So, red flag means that we have went from 10th to now 2nd in the space of a corner. And... You know, I don't even know how many laps there are left now uh, with this, uh, with the remains of the sprint race. I'm trying to go back onto the soft tyres uh, just to end this race, um, but I don't think the game is allowing me, so I'm going to have to try and just hold out on the medium tyres. Anyway, four laps to go, five red lights once again for the restart here in the sprint race in Shanghai. Lights out and away we go, Verstappen gets a tremendous start and we've already lost at least a second to Verstappen as we go and lose position to Charles Leclerc in towards turn one. And as you can see, uh, Leclerc tries to hold around the outside and we retain P2 here in Shanghai with four laps uh, still to go. That red flag really caught me off guard. I didn't realize that that would cause um, a bit of a red flag. I thought that might have um, had a maybe a lap or two's worth safety car, but we got a red flag. And now, on the final lap of the race, we're closing on Verstappen. He goes defensive, slightly defensive, in towards the final corner, in towards the hairpin. We're going to try and not lock up, in towards the final corner. If that was real life, Verstappen would have forced us wide, and he would have gotten a 10-second penalty, just like in real life. Around the final corner, we force him a little bit wide, and we're going to come on to win the sprint race here in Shanghai. Our first sprint race win of the season in very unexpected circumstances. We go from last to first, but that was simply because of the red flag. Eight points to our name. Now let's head to qualifying. Well, here we go again. Welcome back to Shanghai. Welcome back to qualifying in China. And this is a technical, tricky track. Whoever takes pole is going to deserve it. So here we go, qualifying for the Chinese Grand Prix. And it's heavy rain. Heavy rain in Shanghai. Shades of 2009. Fortunately for us, uh, the, the race will be dry. Um, however, it's not really, I don't really get the chance to drive in the rain that much on F124. It seems like every single race I'm a part of, it's either overcast or, or just, you know, dry weather, pretty much. But as you can see, we go on top with a 44.9, which puts us pretty much P1 for now. And as you can see, we enter the last 20 seconds of the session, entering the final corner. We try and ride that curve a little bit. We lose the back end now, and we correct it just at the final moment. But here we go, we are the only one on intermediates, and I say that because Jeff, um, well Mark technically, um, on my outlap, he was saying that intermediate tyres were the best tyres for these conditions. So I'm going to see if Mark's theory of the intermediate tyres, if it's true or not. And as you can see, not even three corners in, and we are already seven temps up. So clearly, Mark has made the right choice. Perez is ahead, entering uh, turn five. We are Perez's uh, personal best in sector one which is session best and now we are already four temps up as well as we enter as sector number two purple sector one and now we've got to hold it just a slight lift off bit of a uh, correction on the back end there as we enter that curve down into fourth gear for this long right hander down into third for this double uh, left hander there and then you want to shift into fourth gear around about now and then pretty much fifth gear stay to the right hand side when you enter this chicane and Mark was absolutely correct. We are two seconds up on our lap time here, and we could absolutely destroy the field. We are down into P11 right now. Um, Piastri and Leclerc are ahead of us, but as we enter and exit the snail section, we are now nearly two and a half seconds up on our lap time. So Mark was correct when he when he said that the intermediate tyres were the best for these conditions. We are losing slight time um, on the main straight, but now as we've got to enter 
the hairpin there, second gear, early shift into third gear and then fourth for traction and now it's just one last corner to try and nail and surely it's got to be pole position. As long as no one else gets um, is on intermediate conditions, 42-2, that is pole position for the Chinese Grand Prix by a country mile and I am honestly surprised how no one, uh, no one pretty much qualified on the Inters. As you can see, 1.6 seconds ahead of George Russell, 1.8 of Lewis Hamilton, Gasly in P5, Verstappen P4. So clearly, Mark was right. With the intermediate tyres, we've got pole position. So now, let's convert it into a race win. The Chinese Grand Prix then is upon us once again. A race that saw Michael Schumacher claim his final Formula One victory in 2006, as well as Red Bull's first with Sebastian Vettel in 2009. There's no doubt plenty more drama to come here in Shanghai. Shanghai International Circuit then is a 16-corner high-speed thrill ride. The long and ever-tightening right-hander at turns one and two tests the driver's patience and the flat open to the elements location tests their skill in a crosswind. Two DRS zones will assist passing and they're available into turn one and down the kilometer long back straight into turn 14. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Thomas lines up on pole position and it's Lewis Hamilton alongside. Considering the rest of the grid we have, Verstappen, Gasly, Perez, Sainz, Fernando Alonso, Norris, Stroll, Leclerc, Oscar Piastri, Russell, Bottas, Ocon, Sonoda, Magnussen, Hulkenberg, Albon, Vesti, and Joe Guan Yu. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. Welcome to the commentary box. I'm Alex Jakes. Delighted to say that we're joined today by Anthony Davidson. Well, it's all about forgetting last time because that was a bit of a shocker. How do they change the story today? You've got to put it behind you. Whatever happened last time, I was always told to the driver, park it, forget about it. Obviously, feel the pain when it happens, but then you can't dwell on it and carry that through to the next race. So put it behind you and just crack on with this race coming your way now. So here we go, getting ready for the race here for the Chi uh, Chinese Grand Prix at Shanghai. The strategy is, of course, a one-stop, uh, uh, mediums to uh, hards. We're going to lower down the uh, wing values to around about 34, 24, just to try and get better, more uh, some more rotation into the car, especially in Sector 2. Um, probably uh, just increase the rear anti-roll bar and slightly increase also the front suspension, slightly increase the tire pressures, but... Everyone is on mediums with the McLarens, also on hard tyres. We know what we need to do, so let's do this. Here we go then. The formation lap gets underway and the excitement here is building as we near ever closer to the start of the race. Which team will come out on top? Who's got their strategies right for today's race? Well, we'll see. As the cars make their way back to the starting grid to form up and get ready for lights out, let's hope the race ahead today is a thrilling one that will go down as a memorable Grand Prix in the history books. Hopefully, indeed, as we get ready for the start of the Chinese Grand Prix for five red lights. Lights out and away we go in China. It's a good start for us, but it's a great start by Lewis Hamilton, who takes the lead of the race here in turn one. Hamilton takes the lead. Gasly trying to go down the inside. As we have the momentum, we're going to try and hold it around the outside in towards turn two. It's the Mercedes versus the Alpine. We're going wheel to wheel between Hamilton and myself. We retain the lead here in Shanghai. We have the inside line, but Hamilton with tremendous traction retakes it out of turn three. As we go down the hill in towards turn five, we try and break late in towards second gear and we that's it we have now officially made the move after that epic battle there that lasted a couple of corners we retain the lead here in shanghai it was a great start for lewis hamilton there he must have had a tremendous launch off that um, off the line there but he's coming back with us in towards uh, the hairpin and unfortunately he won't be able to make the move we do get better traction than him and that is pretty much the story of the first 
uh, six or seven laps of this race. Um, I'm pretty much ahead at this point and Hamilton and Gasly are just trying to close me in using uh, DRS. Um, I have to say that Mercedes was really quick. Uh, it did lose around about four temps in sector two, but just on the main straight, as you can see right there, just DRS, nothing I can do. He is blinking though, so I don't know if he's out of battery or if Lewis Hamilton is just, you know, if he's just saving, uh, just saving his battery for later on in the race. By the way, if you did like this video, then like, share, comment, and subscribe for more F1 24 Alpine to Glory content. Double upload this week. I'll try to get a second race going for Saturday. Meanwhile, we're going to try and maybe think about an overtake, but Hamilton is rarely breaking too early there in towards turn one, so I pretty much go around the outside of Lewis Hamilton once again. And as you can see, I try and force him wide to get Gasly in towards second place, and I do, and it's an Alpine, well, it was an Alpine 1 2 and Hamilton eventually took that position back. And I can't really shake off uh, Lewis Hamilton um, in this race. I went down to 54 brake buys to try and help the car rotate a little bit more, um, but that didn't really uh, help, as we do get an objective for Tyway to keep it under 38.34%, and we've got pretty much uh, just under three laps to go uh, for this, well, two laps to go of this objective, and we are hovering around about, yeah, we just passed the 30% uh, percent range. Uh, right now so I don't know if that's the left front tire uh, for this as you can see 46% already so the front left does take quite a battering around this circuit especially with the long corners of mainly you know turn one and also uh, the long right hand there uh, before the, the before the back straight uh, but as you can see once again Hamilton overtook us on the inside we forced them wide and it's an Alpine one two here in China now on lap nine I'm trying to get away from Gasly, but uh, Gasly just seems to have more pace than Lewis Hamilton. And as you can see, I'm going to let Gasly through. Gasly has DRS. He goes through into the lead. Again, he's flashing battery. So I don't know if he's saving battery or if he hasn't got any battery left. If the AI just used a lot of their battery. But we're in a good spot right now. We are in a good spot. It's a 1 2 for us. Hamilton and Fed. Alonso has the fast lap. And it's pretty much going to be a five horse race for the race win. No, it's not. No, it's not. Once again. Are you fucking serious? A second mechanical failure. Uh, I think it was the turbocharger. Was it the turbocharger? I'm not really sure, but I think the turbocharger has exploded. We are out of the Chinese Grand Prix after being in second. Second, are you kidding me? <sighs> second consecutive DNF. Wonderful. That's what you want to be seeing. Simply, simply wonderful. It's always box office when this man's at the front. Max Verstappen takes the chequered flag. But another race victory today, and you can clearly see they're starting to believe in themselves more and more. You get to a stage where you become very hard to beat as a driver when you keep putting in performances like this one. The drivers are en route to the podium as we speak. What a fantastic win for the Red Bull team. They've performed exceptionally today, keeping us firmly on the edge of our seats throughout the entirety of the race. Congratulations to everyone at the team. Well done to Verstappen on a very undeserved win. Uh, Gasly, Gasly's not even in the top three. That's that's quite shocking, uh, considering that he was leading the race. Alonso is in second, and Hamilton is in third. So uh, we've lost more points. We've lost more points to Max Verstappen. I don't know if there's a bug with this game once again, with the engine failures, if there is. I might have to turn them off because two back-to-back -back engine failures i mean i know it's alpine and i know that our engine is absolutely horrific um but yeah we should have scored way more points today gasly finished in p6 so yeah p6 wow that's uh, very disappointing from my teammate he was leading the race um and yeah he was 14 seconds away from stopping that's insane uh but yeah a disappointing result we are 53 points behind Verstappen in the Drivers' Championship. And we have now dropped to fourth in the Constructors as well. But that is that for episode number 20 of the Alpine to Glory. Uh, a second DNF as well. Not really that good 
honestly. Um, but yeah, as you can see, we don't really uh, progress. We drop down to 81 focus and our recognition goes absolutely nowhere. But we're going to end this video with a secret meeting and I'll, I'll, I'll show you guys who the secret meeting is. And this could decide where we end up for season 3. But thank you for watching. Make sure to leave like, share, comment and subscribe for more F124 Alpine to Glory career mode content. And I'll see you all in the next ATG video. In a bit.